in me. Truly, I will bless his holy name. We honor God this morning for his righteousness. We honor God for who he is. And because the Lord is who he is, we are who we are. And so we say grace and peace to one and grace and peace to all. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for you this morning, uh, our prayer line family. We thank God for each and every one of you that are here this morning. We thank God for those that the Holy Spirit has watched over this week. And we do pray that you had a powerful service over the weekend. We pray that God met you at your point of need. And we know that it was the Lord himself that met you on your Sabbath day. Uh, whose report shall you believe? I don't know about you, but we believe the report of the Lord. And so we bless God this morning. We thank God for him. We thank God for his righteousness, his mercy, and his grace. Travailing men and women, changing a nation through prayer, prophetic prayer line. We are simulcasting uh, uh, simultaneously this morning. We are broadcasting. We are on Facebook Live. That's right. We are on Facebook Live this morning as well. And so we thank God for him. We thank God for this new modern technology, what God has done for us, what God is doing through us. And so if you have any friends that they say that their phones won't allow them to get on our prophetic prayer line, then let them know to tune in Facebook Live. Amen. Under Dr. Loretta V. Harris. Dr. Loretta V. Harris on Facebook Live. We are there this morning. So we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Praise God. We bless and honor for the viewers this morning. They're coming in. Praise God. We thank God they're coming in. I've heard people say that before, that people are joining in and they're watching. So we bless God for those. This is our first day, so you all bear with us. Any kinks are in the road, anything that uh, we're just learning to do this, and, and we're believing God. Amen. We're believing God. We bless God this morning. Thank for God for those that are here. Good morning, uh, Minister Crystal. How are you, precious? We thank God for you. Uh, share this with someone and let them know that we're here on Facebook Live this morning. This is something that the Lord has placed on our spirit to do. And we're just obeying God. We just believe in God that it's his timing, that God uh, has a time, a set time in life to do whatever is necessary for us to be able, amen, to do uh, that what he's called us to do. Good morning, Minister Kelly. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for those. We're here live and we're excited about what God is doing. Good morning, Sister Brenda. How are you? Praise God. Yes, God. We're here and we believe in God. We thank God for you family. We bless God yet once again. Thank you, Jesus, for everyone that is here. Listen, listen, let's make sure we share this uh, with everyone. Make sure you share with everyone that we're here this morning on our Facebook Live. We're on our prayer line simultaneously. So those of you that are faithful on the lines, we're still here with you. Good morning, Sister Marquita. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Santana. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for you being here. Uh, share with everyone that has not been able to get on our prayer line, that we are availing ourselves to everyone according to the Spirit of God and what God wants for us to do this morning on our prophetic prayer line. We honor God for His righteousness. We thank God. We know that our prayer line is what? Our prayer line is a life support line. And this is that what God has given us to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we thank God for what God has done for us. We thank God that it is God that we live and move in. Good morning, Minister Julia Joy. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you being here this morning. God gave us an opportunity to be in our life support line. And God said he filters down each and every day those nutrients that are necessary for us to flourish in life and those that are necessary for us to continue in the walk that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, Sister Michelle. God bless you. We thank God that you're here this morning. And so we honor him yet once again, prayer line family. We thank God for you being here this morning. Uh, make sure that you... Uh, Share this with everyone to let them know that Dr. Harris, the woman, the wisdom, and the word, the devil-busting, demon-chasing woman of God is here live on our Facebook. And so we bless God for that. Good morning, Sister Lily. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you being here. We want to uh, give just a few announcements. Want to make sure that those that are tuning in that are not familiar with our ministry, that they have a full understanding as to what God is doing in our lives as well. Those that don't ha have a full understanding about us or maybe probably Probably uh, you've not heard of Travailing Men and Women. Travailing Men and Women is a prayer line that God gave us over eight years ago. And we've been here every day, Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday. Our number is 712-432-0075. Your access code is 533510. So you can also call in on that line as well. You can call in on that line as well. Uh, we're here for you. We're believing God that we're going to take this next move, this next challenge. 
challenge that the Lord has given us to be here live on Facebook. And so we're believing God. Amen. This is your life support line. God filters down those nutrients that are necessary each and every day. He filters down those things that are necessary to do what? To make sure that we have the things that are necessary on a daily basis. And so that way we don't run short to what God has given us. That way we are filled with his power and we're filled with his glory. And the power of God does meet us each and every day on this prayer line. He meets us every day on this prophetic prayer line. So we bless God for that. Uh, we want to share with everyone. Make sure you begin to share this number. Good morning, Sister Estella. God bless you. God bless you. Make sure you share with everyone also about our ladies retreat. That's right, family. You all know that we have our ladies retreat that is planned and we're believing God that this is going to be astronomical. We're believing that God is going to bring forth so many people. This is why he impressed upon my spirit that we've got to go beyond the prayer line to make sure that everyone can live this good life. Good morning, uh, parachute baby. God, God bless you. We want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to do what? To go and live life fully and freely, as we always say so affectionately on our prayer line, that we're to live life fully and freely. And this is what God would want for us to do. So we're planning a ladies retreat. That's right. This ladies retreat is, watch this, get this, catch it. It's a six day, five nights. That's right. A six days and five nights of nothing but elegance, uh, nothing but um, rest, relaxation, challenges, but yet so fulfilling and so rewarding to each and every one of us. Our ladies retreat is going to be August the 13th through the 17th in 2018. That's right. We've got ample opportunity to do whatever is necessary to make sure that we get to our ladies retreat. Our ladies retreat is also held in the Dominican Republic. That's right. It's going to be held in the Dominican Republic. And so we bless God for that. August the 13th through the 17th, that's in 2018. So we've got ample opportunity to do whatever is necessary to make sure that we will get to this ladies retreat. That's right. It's going to be held at the Crown Plaza. Crown, I'm sorry, Crown Villas. The Crown Villas is where our ladies retreat is going to be held. Share this information with as many people as possible. Good morning, Sister Muffin. Share this information with everyone that is possible. Also, we want all the ladies to attend our ladies retreat. You want the time of relaxation. You want a time away from frustrations and miseries and heartaches and pains and just do me, you know, just some me time, some girl time where you can just get in that place for yourself. Amen. Let's just be a little selfish if we would. Can we just be a little selfish and let's just forget about everybody else, forget about the responsibilities that we have for others and just think about ourselves. Well, you have that opportunity August the 13th through the 17th, 2018. And we've made it so affordable for everyone, Prayer Line family. We've made it affordable for everyone. That's right. Everyone can attend our ladies retreat uh, August the 13th through the 17th. 2018, we're going to the Dominican Republic and we're going to the Crown Villas. Uh, our first payments are due December the 15th. The next one is due February the 23rd. Then your final payment is due April the 27th. Now we had some sisters that said that you know, they want to know if we can give them opportunities to do uh, a little bit more in our time management with our finances. We, we broke it down on last week that you can do $50 a week between now and when? December the 15th, and you'll have your first payment there. If you put aside $50 per week from now, from last week to December the 15th, you'd have your first uh, payment at that time, your first portion of your deposit. It's only $235 per deposit for three times for this beautiful six days and five nights in the beautiful, beautiful Dominican Republic. It is exotic. It is beautiful. It is luxurious. Amen. It's just rewarding. Uh, they call their villas mansions. That's right. They call them mansions. So you tell your girlfriends about this uh, beautiful vacation that we have planned for you, this uh, excursion to get away from things. Let everybody know where we're going and the dates that we're going to. So you can call our admin line at 407-545-1133. If you need any additional information, please call the admin line at 407-545-1133 and we're believing God. I believe God it's your time. I believe God it's your season. I believe that God has appointed uh, for such a time as this uh, for you to be able to do what? To live life fully and freely and we're believing God that this is your time as well. It's time for the believers. It's time for the body of Christ to, 
have some fun and to live this life and not just pay bills all your life. I always uh, admonish our prayer line to break that relationship up with Bill. Sometimes we just got to quit Bill and let him know, don't mess with Bill. Leave Bill alone. <laughs> Amen. And we bless and honor God for that as well. We thank God for those that are joining in. Good morning, Sister Candice. Good morning. How are you, precious? God bless you. We've got a word this morning, prayer line family and our Facebook family. Please share with everyone and let them know that we're here on our Facebook page this morning. We're also here uh, on our prayer line. We're always here in the presence of the Lord and we're always doing what God has asked us to do. And so let's share this this morning with everyone. Let them know that uh, the devil busting demon chasing Moses with a skirt on is live on Facebook. And we thank God. Amen. Dominican Republic. That's right. August the 13th uh, through the 15th. And you call that admin line. Thank you, daughter. You're on top of it. Praise God. Please share that family. We want for everyone to be a part of what God God is doing with us at Travailing Men and Women. We're going to change a nation back to God. This is our assignment. We have embraced God and we're doing the next phase of God, what God has called us to do. So if you have your Bibles this morning, family, if you have your Bibles, prayer line family, we bless God for you as well. We give a shout out this morning to Sister Mabel in Tampa. We give a shout out this morning to Sister Sarah. Good morning, Sister Linda in Georgia. We bless God for you. Good morning, Brother Frank uh, in Jersey. How are you, man of God? We bless God for Sister Van my daughter in Tallahassee, just so many others. We don't want our, our regular Facebook family, uh, nor do we want our prayer line family to feel uh, rejected in any way because we're bringing in the new people this morning. And so we bless and honor God. Again, we tell those that are on our prayer line, those that are on the prayer line, if you want to see me live and in person, if you've never met Dr. Harris, then you get on Facebook this morning. Amen. Get on Facebook. It's open to the public. It's open to the public and everyone can view us uh, here on Facebook live this morning. And we're just believing God that we're taking this new uh, uh, genre in God. We're taking this next step that God has given us and we're believing God. If you've got your Bibles this morning, I want you to peruse with me to the book of John. Uh, go with me this morning in your Bibles to the book of John. And we got to make a few little adjustments here so you all bear with us. Amen. This is our first day and so everything is all good. And we're just trying to believe God for what he's doing in our lives. So any adjustments I need to be made, uh, as they always say, take everything in love. I charge it to the uh, head and not the heart because it's all truly done from a place called love. It's done from a place of call love. We're perusing this morning in the book of John, uh, John chapter number 10, and it's a very familiar passage of scripture for many, uh, those of us that read our Bibles um, adamantly, and uh, we know what God has to say to us through the Spirit by His Word. He sent His Word to do what? He sent His Word to heal us. He sent His Word. Good morning, evangelist. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor Selena. Amen. Please tag everyone. Yes, tag everyone. I'm not familiar with this stuff, so don't ask me to do nothing, y'all. I see a little number Number one down there with a tag. Am I supposed to tap that? <laughs> Praise God. I'm not familiar with this. So you all let me know. Help a sister out. Help a sister out. Good morning, Sister Karina. God bless you. You all help me out. Am I supposed to press this number one down here? It says to add in the tag, to add in the tag. So I'll just press the tag button. Am I supposed to do that? Amen. Praise God. It is what it is. Now, if I blow it and disappear, y'all know that it's trial, error, and trial by basis this morning. We're in the Bible. Amen. Alicia, amen. You can join us, daughter. Amen. We're in the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you this morning. We're in our Bible this morning, and we're blessing God this morning. See, now I told y'all I got all the pictures down there now, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, somebody give me some notes to see how to get this away. I've got all your pictures down here now, and I can't see your comments anymore. So we bless God for what we're doing. I don't want to tap anything or do anything wrong because I'm not familiar with this. I'm surprised I was able to even get on here at all. <laughs> And so we bless God for that. I can't see your comments anymore. I know you can swipe it to one side and all the comments will disappear, but I wanted to see the comments. There we go. We're back. Amen. Praise God. We're back. All right. We're in the Bible. We're in the book of John. And let's all just help a sister out this morning because I'm not familiar with this at all. This is uh, something that God has impressed upon my spirit, but I'm one that I don't do what everybody else does. I wait to the timing of God, the kairos of God to do what God has called me to do. I'm not one to just jump on a bandwagon, you know, and, and what's uh, popular and what everyone else does. But whenever the spirit of the Lord tells me to do, then I obey God. We're in the Bible this morning. We're in John chapter number 10, and we're going to start for your listening ear around verse number 7. John chapter 10. 10 and verse number seven, hear ye the reading of God's word. Then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, 
I am the door of the sheep. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture, shall go in and out and find pasture. Isn't it strange how Jesus gives you access to something, but he doesn't lock you down in that position. Whatever God gives you, the Bible declares that the blessings of the Lord, he maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow to it. So God doesn't put us in a place of containment. He doesn't put us in a place of bondage, but he always gives us freedom in the Holy Ghost. And this freedom that God gives us, give us free choice. It gives us opportunities to go and come as we please. I, I want to leave a topic with our new Facebook family this morning. And of course, with our prayer line family, our prayer line family is so obedient. They're so faithful. Want to leave a topic with everyone this morning. There is always one door that is opened. There is always one door that is opened. And I gave it a subtopic, access to your vision access to your vision. We're going to pray this morning. Also family, we're going to pray and we're going to have God to come in in our re repentive hearts this morning in that place that God would cause the Holy Spirit to minister to us in that place that it would be God that we live and move in. Thank you for that anointing that destroys every yoke in our lives. We thank you for new opportunities. We thank you for new ways of life. Father, we thank you that you've come that we might have life and that which more abundantly. And so now, God, send your word that will cause uh, uh, anointing to destroy yokes on the lives of every believer on this uh, prayer line this morning in our new family on Facebook. We pray now, Father, that that burden removing, yoke destroying power of the living God will fall fresh upon every believer's heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, praise God. There is always one door that is open. But the thing about it is, you know, family is which door will you choose? Are you going to choose the right door or will you choose the wrong door? In life, you're judged pretty much by your status in life and you're judged by your outer appearance. And a lot of times you're uh, judged by your accomplishments in life, those things that you've done and maybe peradventure what school you attended, where you went to school, what neighborhood you lived in and, and what type of a car you drive, what social position do you hold in your community? All of these things factor in as to what doors have been opened to you. Now, for us that has a sordid past and those things that we've done that weren't so good in life, you know, where we make those poor choices, maybe peradventure we've got a felony in times past, or maybe peradventure we had some questionable things and struggles in our lives. And so it puts us in another place and another position in life that certain doors aren't available to us. Uh, say peradventure you've had a shady past or or some type of drama that you've withstood, or you're, you're likely to be challenged in areas of unacceptable uh, unacceptableness to connect with certain people in life and they won't embrace you at your local country club. I, I need a amen uh, from our prayer line and I need an amen uh, from our Facebook family this morning. Uh, they won't embrace you uh, uh, sometimes uh, at certain things in your life. And, and a lot of times, you know, if you go to functions and all of a sudden you're shunned and now all of a sudden uh, people want to push you aside. And so you're not one that anybody would embrace uh, so readily. Uh, they, they're not going to just fling those doors open to you, they're not going to invite you to their social calendar of events. And so you're going to be minimized and you're going to be judged by your character, those little flaws that we had and poor adventure, you know, the poor choices that we made ourselves. Uh, even better yet, sometimes it's it's sad to say, but it is uh, judged sometimes by the color of our skin. We're still in that society whereby people look at the color of your skin and they judge you. Uh, the Bible says that Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 9. He said, because a great door uh, uh, for effective works has been opened to me and there are many who oppose me. He said that there are many adversaries behind this door, even though it was effective for ministry. It was good for him to be able to go out and minister in these doors. But because of the adversaries that were there, he was not ready to readily go into this place. But thanks be unto God. Amen. Jesus doesn't have those types of barriers. Uh, Jesus doesn't have those types of blockades. He doesn't have those types of hindrances, prejudices. These are they who do what? Jesus said, these are the ones that I really want. I want the ones that have a challenge past. I want the ones that's got a shady past. I want the ones that had crooked things in their lives. I want the ones that I feel the Holy Ghost prayer line. I feel him. He said, I want those that have had those challenges in life. He says, why? He says, come unto me. These are they that I want. I want for you to come to this door. I want for you to enter into the, this place of rest. Uh, he says in Matthew, 
Matthews chapter 11 and verse number 28. And I quote, come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, heavy laden mean what mean to be burdened down. It means to be loaded down. And he said, and I will give you rest. Now, you know, this word rest in Greek, it means what? It means catapusis. It means a catapusis or a catapausis. It means a harmonious working of all the faculties and the affections of what? Of your will, of the heart, of your affections, of your imagination and your consciousness. So Jesus said, once you walk through this door, I'm going to work on all those areas in your life. I'm going to work on your will. Amen. Because this is where our will becomes Jesus will. Then he said, watch this sister Lily. He said, I'm going to do what now I'm going to work on your affections. So once Jesus begins to work on our affections, we then no longer can make the wrong choices in life. We don't pull those people in our lives that don't have no place in our life because Jesus is the seed of our consciousness. And so the choices that we make from that time on, they are from the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, if you'll allow me, I'll even work on your imaginations. So he's not going to allow you to have dreams that you can never uh, have or obtain the dreams that you have now, the aspirations that you have now, those desires on the inside, they come from God himself. Amen. He said, come to me and I'm going to work on your will, your heart, your imagination, and the conscious, because each of them have found God in the ideal sphere of its own satisfaction. So when you come to Jesus, not only do you find him, good God almighty, but every aspect of your life finds Jesus also. He said, when you come to me, each and every one of those things in your life, they find them positions in life. They find their own self-worth. They found in God, the ideal sphere for its own satisfaction. So now my satisfactions in life comes from God. Now my appetites come from God because because why? He has a developmental process. Hallelujah. God has a developmental process now. Amen. That God will allow you to do what is necessary. He will allow you. Amen. Somebody. He'll allow you to come right to that place. Glory to God. He will allow you to come to that place in God. There's a place that God wants for you to come, but we've got to know that the door that God has opened for us, this door, somebody shout this door. Now watch him. This door that Jesus offers, he brings the believers to a place that will suit supersede any offer that any man could give you. Now, you know, I don't know about you, but I think I would like that one much better. I think I would love the fact that Jesus can offer me something that this life cannot offer me. Man can only offer you those things, amen, temporarily. But Jesus says, I give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. He says that you are to lay aside the weight and the sense in this door. In this door that Jesus gives you opportunities, he said, I daily load you with my benefits. Then he said, I'll perfect those things things that concern you. Am I in the house this morning, Facebook family? Am I in the house this morning, travailing men and women? Understand and recognize, he said that you are to cast all your cares upon him for God cares for you. Then he said, I'm going to perfect everything that concerns you. Sister Marquita, he said, the list goes on and on. He said that the things that I have for you, hallelujah, they are not temporary. The things that you see are temporary, but the things that he never present for you, they will last forever. Come on, open your mouth and shout they will last forever then he puts it this way he says watch this he said you need to learn how to take my yoke take my yoke. Amen. Don't take the burdens of life. Don't take the things that the enemy wants to give you. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This word yoke in Greek, it means a zukos. It's a zukos. A zukos is watch. A zukos is a submission to his authority. Once we submit ourselves to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, then every aspect of our life is now rooted and grounded in him. Hallelujah. He says, now this is the time where your will, where your heart, where your imagination and the consciousness have found themselves in God. So there's no longer a fight. There is no longer a war. Hallelujah. Because now every aspect of your life governs itself to the will and the authority and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is where we get our balance in life. Y'all can I help someone this morning? This is where you obtain your balance in life. He said in him, he says, watch this. He says, now once you submit yourself to me and at that time, the zoo of he, who he, is the yokes that he have in your life. He said, my yokes are easy. Amen. My burdens are light. They are not a taskmaster. They are not something that seems to be uh, uh, unattainable in your life. So he says, I bring a balance 
in any bondage. Oh, you better write that. Jesus says, I bring a balance in any bondage in your life. Jesus declares, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest. You shall find, that's that word rest again, that catapusus, that rest. Jesus said, you can find the rest. Does anyone on this prayer line want rest this morning? Does any one of our Facebook family, do you want rest this morning? I don't know about you, but I want the rest that only Jesus could give me. He said, I give you rest for what? For your soul. God said, I'm about to give you rest for your soul if you pick the correct door. There are many, many doors that are open, but when we understand and recognize how to not be fooled by that devil, when we under, and he called me Isaiah, when we understand to allow God to be God in our life, the Bible declares that we are to let God arise and to let our enemies be scattered. There's an enemy that doesn't want for you to walk through the door. There's an enemy that doesn't want you to have freedom in the Holy Ghost. There's an enemy that wants to keep you bound. He wants to keep you downtrodden. He wants to keep you in a place of distortedness. He wants to keep you in a place that you cannot travel to and fro, in a place of bondage and restrictions and restraint. But the Bible lets one to understand and recognize if you are willing and obedient, amen, God will cause you to eat the good of the land. He will God will cause you to eat the good of the land. So you've got to know that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Call upon the name of the Lord and he will answer you that we've got to learn how to go in the correct door. We've got to learn. Amen. We've got to learn how to go in the right door. Come on, open your mouth and shout a right door. There is a right door. There's a way that seems right unto man. But after that, the Bible lets one to understand you error in your ways. But once we allow hallelujah to find that rest in God, that peace that surpasses all understanding that will allow you to be harmonious workings in all the faculties and all your affections. That's where God wants to work in on us. The enemy comes in. He tries to work on your affections. He tries to work on your emotions. He tries to attach himself to those things that are important to you, but we've got to know how to go in the right door. Understand and recognize this morning that Jesus has a way of opening doors that no man can shut. He is the only one that can open a door that nobody can stop you. God can bust a move on Satan. Come on up in here, prayer line family. Come on up in here, Facebook family. God can bust a move on Satan that would defy gravity. He told us on last week that we're about to defy gravity. He said what goes up must come down in the natural, but this time when we go up, we're never coming down. In 2018, and I prophesy under the anointing of God, in 2018, your life is going to be better than it's ever been before. God is going to give you opportunity that has never presented itself to you that way before. God said he's making a way out of no way. He said, well, there seems to be no way. He said he's now getting ready to make a way out of the desert. He's going to glory to God. He's going to cause increase in every aspect of your life. He said he can move mountains. He can part the Red Sea. He said he's going to send Pharaoh packing. God said, arise and let your enemies be scattered. This is the time for the saints of God to be victorious. It's time now for the saints of God to take their rightful place in the kingdom of God. God said he can, he can, he can destroy the yokes and he's going to remove your burdens. You're going to be burden free in 2018. Have I a prayer line this morning? God said promotion comes from God. He said wealth and riches are in your house and the blessings of the Lord. He maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow to it. He doesn't add sorrow. Shall I revelate? Shall I revelate? Watch this. God can put your life back together again. God said he's about to put your life back together again, only if you're willing and obedient. The best thing that I like about God is he always has stipulations in our life. He always has certain stipulations that if we are willing and obedient, amen, if we'll make God head of our lives, if he gives us a choice, he's not a taskmaster. He said to choose ye this day, if you're willing to serve me or not, the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich and he addeth no sorrow. So once we find ourselves upside down in a mortgage payment, we find ourselves upside down in car payments, maybe per adventure, that's not a blessing from the Lord. He said, my blessings make you rich and doesn't add sorrow to it. So we've got to consider the source. Consider, is this a blessing from the Lord or is it a burden from the taskmaster? Amen. Freedom in the Holy Ghost. Freedom in the Holy Ghost. An open door. An open door that adds no sorrow to it. Freedom behind this door. Uh, freedom behind the door. Liberty behind this door. Uh, new beginnings behind this door. 
power behind this door, anointing behind this door, favor behind this door. They are behind the door, but you've got to choose the door because there's always one real door that is open. There's always one real door. You know the counterfeit always comes first. The counterfeit always comes first. Uh, this word door in Greek, it means thura, T-H-U-R-A-H. It's a thura, a, a thoroughfare, what we call in the natural and in our English vernacular, a thura, a thoroughfare. It means a gate. It, it means a connection to Christ. Watch this. I'm going somewhere. It means an ability by faith to accept Christ as being the way, the truth, and the light. This door. We accept you because you present yourself to us as a living sacrifice. We accept you, Jesus, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, it, it means, watch this, an entrance into the kingdom of God. Uh, this door, it means Christ's entrance into the heart of a repentant believer. Watch this. Watch this. This is the main topic right now. You know what this door gate means? Ask me what? Ask me what? It also means access to behold visions relative to the purposes of God. Once you walk in this door, amen, now you have access to behold the visions that are relative to the purposes of God. In other words, watch this. In other words, you've not really tapped into who you really are until you walk through this door. You really don't know what God has for you. You don't, you don't know your best opportunities. You don't know the best things that God has for you until you do what? Until you gain access to this door. Behind this door, door is access to behold visions relative to the purposes of God. Now I can stop right there. We can stop right there relative to the purposes of God. What is it that God has purposed in my life? What is it that God has purposed in my life? He has purposed so many other aspects of life. He has, amen, hallelujah, access to behold visions. So you've been in obscure places until you walk behind the door. This is why I hear you, Holy Ghost. This is why the enemy keeps us on certain jobs, amen, certain career choices that God has never intended for us because we haven't really accessed the area in which God will cause you to have your full purpose in life. The thing that he called you to do, that you do that thing if nobody ever paid you not one red cent to do it. The thing that causes you so much love and compassion and you're thrilled about doing, you're excited about doing it. Well, God said access to behold visions relative to the purposes of God are behind the door. The enemy wants to make sure that you don't go through that door so he can keep you in a place called bondage. He can keep you in a place, hallelujah, called containment. He can keep you in a restrained, restricted place that you'll never ever fulfill the objective that God has for you. So then we're weighted down with the cares of life. We're weighted down with opportunities that we feel that opportunities, but they're really not an opportunity. They're excess baggage in your life to weigh you down. So when you get to the place in life, amen, that you really feel that you're ready to produce something. When you get to that place, the Bible said in the book of Isaiah, they got right to the place of birthing, but they had no power. They had no strength to do what God actually called them to do because we've exerted all of our authority. We've exerted all of our energies and our strength in places that were never amounting to anything. Who have I been sent for this morning? Who have I been sent for? The Holy Spirit challenged you today. He challenged you today to go in that open door. There is always one door that is open. Jesus said, if any man shall knock, hallelujah, he said, I, you should have access to this place. Knock and the door shall be open to seek and you shall find. He said, watch it. He said, simply put, you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not access to behold visions relative to the purposes of God. Oh, can you all put that on Snapchat this morning? Can you put it on Instagram this morning? I now have access to behold visions relative to the purposes of God. So this means what? It means now you have an ability to multitask. It means now you have an ability to do what? To have multiple blessings and multiple businesses. It means now that you're going to be an entrepreneur of many things. God lets you understand he's given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. And so we have to learn how to tap into those things. He gives us full access. What? What did Jesus said in the book of uh, Matthews? He said, watch, watch this. He said, the keys of the kingdom belong to you and whatever you bind on this earth, he will bind in heaven. But whatever you loose on this earth, he will loose in heaven. Access is granted. Glory to God. Come on up in here. Come go with me this morning. You want to experience real life? Uh, go through the door. If you want to have peace that surpasses all understanding, it's time for you to go through that door. The only place where God reveals the real you is behind the door. The enemy is going to always make you feel 
that you're never going to have. He's going to always make you feel that whatever you have right now, as far as you're going to go in life, but you got to know it's behind the door. Choose ye this day whom thou will serve. In serving God is the full capacities that God wants for you to do. In serving God behind the door, it's behind the door. You read it. Jesus said, watch this. He said, I say unto you that I am the door. Hallelujah. Only one door that is open to you from this day forth is the door of opportunities, the door of hope. Hallelujah. The door of progressions, the doors of prosperity, the doors of success. Have our prayer line this morning. Have I a prayer line this morning that believes God for the impossible? It's time now where the Bible lets one to understand that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, but we've got to go through the right door. We've got to have access to the right door. So all the other things that the enemy sent at us, hallelujah, it will not be a misnomer in our lives. We will not be in a diabolical quagmire of Satan's control. No longer, no longer. Jesus said, all that ever came before me are thieves. So whatever presented itself to you before you walk through the door, good God almighty, it was trying to snatch your blessing. It was trying to snatch your anointing. It was trying to snatch your favor and it was trying to snatch your power. But watch him. He said they were robbers. So you've been robbed of your real identity. You've been robbed of your real identity. And so now we no longer have any identity crisis, but the sheep, he said, the sheep didn't hear them. Are we a real sheep this morning? He said, my sheep shall what? He said, my sheep shall know my voice and not another voice will they follow. The sheep didn't listen uh, to that stranger. The sheep didn't listen to that wrong voice. Have our witness. Watch him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. The only one that can gain access to this door are the sheep. Are we sheep or are we wolves? He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I've come that they might have life and that they might have it what? More abundantly. It's time for us to have life and not for life to have us. It's time for us as the believers to have life and not for life to have us. Uh, you want lucrative careers? Go through the door. You want entrepreneurship? Go through the door. If you want favor, destiny, hope, peace, joy, deliverance, I challenge you this morning to go through the door. There's always one door that is open, but you got to choose the right door. I've got three pieces of paper here, and I want you all to just begin to write your comments which door you're going to choose. Are you going to choose door number one, door number two, or door number three? Which one are you going to choose this morning, family? Door number one, door number two, or door number three. Choose one. Watch this. We're going somewhere with this. Choose one for me this morning. Choose one. What door are you going to choose? Door number one, door number two, or door number three. Don't be scared. Pick one. Did Jesus ask you to choose one? He say. I am the door. So which door are you going to choose? Which door are you going to choose? Door number one, door number two, or door number three? I'm going to give you a few seconds. Prayer line, you all get in on this morning. Get in on it this morning. Get in on it this morning, prayer line family. Which one are you going to choose? All right, watch this. Door number one. Misery, pain, failure, addictions, bad relationships. All are behind door number one. This was all behind door number one. Misery, pain, failure, addictions, bad relationships. Oh, I'm so sorry. But guess what? God is a God of a second chance. All of those that chose door number two, how many chose door number two? Door number two. Average life, uh, moderate success. Children, you've got those. Got a pretty good marriage. But in all of that, you had to file bankruptcy. You had foreclosures, uh, your homes were repossessed, and your cars were repossessed behind door number two. And so how many chose door number three? How many chose door number three? Well, guess what? The opportunities were behind door number three. On door number three, you have eternal life. Behind door number three, you have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Behind door number three, you have love. 
You have joy. You have the anointing. You have the agape love, power, opportunity, success, loving families, and obedience. There's never a wrong one in choosing. What we have to do is we have to listen to the Holy Ghost. See, once we begin to fine tune our ears into the Holy Ghost, he said, I will lead you and I will guide you. So this is the thing that is so prevalent in our lives as believers now. He says to choose ye this day. So we have to make a choice. Somebody shout, make a choice. That's right. We've got to learn how to make the right choices in God. We've got to learn how to make the right choices. So, But God is so good about it. He'll give you an opportunity to do it again. Do you want to do it again? So let's choose again. Can we choose again? Let's choose one more time. We now, now understand and recognize this door number three. That's right. The opportunities of life are behind door number three. There's always one door open. We had door number one. We had door number two and we had door number three. But guess what? Jesus didn't shut the door yet. Remember the 10 virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. And so when he shut the door for them, opportunity didn't avail itself to them anymore. But this day you have the opportunity to make the right choice. If you made the wrong choice, then guess what? That's why he did it. You think he gave this illustration for naught? He did it in order for us to get it correct. He did it in order for us to make the right choice and then to sharpen our consciousness. The seat of our consciousness is geared by the Holy Ghost. And so we listen to the Holy Ghost. We let our mind be fine-tuned in the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord God, which door are you behind? And so we should have stopped and paused at that one second in order to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. He said that I will lead and I will guide. Now, this is not a conviction, so don't get all twisted and don't get bent out of shape. Uh, amen, somebody. It's just an opportunity to get it right. It's an opportunity to correct those things in our life. There is always one door open. But which door is it? And which one we're going to choose? Allowing you access to your vision only through the door. If you have some things in your life that you aspire to do, if you got things in your life that you really want to do and, and it's been some type of a hesitation in your life and you've really not been able to produce anything, maybe peradventure you're behind the wrong door. Maybe it's not the one that God has for you. There is a way that seems right unto man. And so we have to make the right choice by the Holy Spirit. It's by the Holy Spirit. Anything that we do in this flesh, you know it's going to be a mess. Your flesh is your soul, your will, your mind, your emotions, your intellect, and your memory. But Jesus says, once you go behind that right door, he said, I take care of all those things. I correct all of those things. They belong to me now. It's called that rest, the R-E-S-T. In Greek, the what? The katapousis. The harmonies working of all the faculties and your affections of the will, the heart the imagination, the consciousness, because each one of them have found their place in God and the spirit of who God is. And so now they're satisfied. So now your soul is not searching for other things. Your soul is not looking and reaching for other things. It doesn't desire anything but the will of God. I will to do the will of the Father. Amen. I will to do the will of the Father. And so this is what we allow God to do through his perfect will, through his perfect will. There's always one door that is open. But it's up to you to choose. Who are we choosing today? Will we be led by the Spirit? We'll be led by the wrong door. We walked in wrong doors too long. We walked in hesitations. We walked in misery and pain. Haven't we given them enough access in our lives? Haven't we given way to those things long enough in our lives? There's going to be a shift in 2018. And I prophesy to this body of Christ that God says that we are ready to defy gravity. Gravity is a heaviness or a weight. What goes up must come down. Well, God said that's not going to happen any longer because Jesus went up and he came down. Jesus defied gravity just for you in order to live. He defied gravity for the body of Christ. God says that the body of believers are going to exalt at a rapid speed this from, from now on. Uh, he said that we are not coming down. Jesus went up on the cross for a mere moment, but he came down to do what? To depossess gravity. Jesus became gravity in order for us to live, to remove the heaviness and the weights of our sins. He came down, went into the grave, but now he's seated in a heavenly place. So in actuality, what goes up, it doesn't necessarily have to come down. Amen. Jesus defied gravity. The Lord said that the obedient saints, hear me now. He said the obedient saints are about to launch into successful prosperous places in 2018. The Lord says, and we're not coming down. He says, whenever you gain now, you don't have to concern yourself about losing anything else. Amen. Somebody, he says that you won't lose your prosperity. You will not lose your favor. You're not going to lose your anointing and you surely won't lose your power. 
Because where? We're in that open door. We're in that door that Jesus said for us to go behind that door. Jesus said he became gravity and gravity is the force that gives weight to the objects. My God, that's a word right there. Gravity is the force that gives weight to to the objects. So we are the subjects of the objects of Jesus because we went behind that door. So now he does what? He gives us the weight. He gives us the opportunities. He gives us his benefit. Jesus said, I became gravity and gravity is the force that gives weight to the objects. Watch him. He said in 2018, he's going to supernaturally change your lingo. He's going to supernaturally change your understanding. He's going to enlighten your understanding. In 2018, many shall be entrepreneurs. Uh, entrepreneur is a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. In other words, God says when opportunity presents itself to you this time, don't you have a hesitation behind it. There are going to be people that are going to be presented, um, uh, proposals and people are going to bring things to you that you said, there's no way that I can afford that. There is no way that I can do this. God said, you can't, but you can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens you. Watch him. God says, now it's time for you to know that he is God. It is time for you to understand that there's going to be a cross blend with the secular and a cross blend with those that are in uh, God's uh, believers body of Christ. So when he puts you in a position and I used to question God about this, y'all, I used to question him about the ones that were believers a blending in with the secular, but the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And so now there's going to be a cross blend where God is going to put the two of them together, but he has a people that's strong enough not to be pulled with the world. He has a people that will not bow down to Baal. He has a people that he can introduce you to new things in society and you won't forget about the God of your salvation. Have our prayer line this morning. Have our Facebook family this morning. Share this with someone this morning and let them know, amen. God said he's about to explode your life. He's about to make a move on Satan that will make such an impact in your life that you will never go back. You will never be broke. You'll never be lonely. You'll never be without again, says the spirit of the Lord. Remember how Abraham prospered, but he had to go away from folk. He had to go away from those things that were familiar with him. He had to go away from his family and his friends. Do I have a talk back prayer line this morning? He had to move himself and push past what was comfortable for him. He had to push past into a spiritual realm that he simply believed God and he trusts God. Where well, you're about to embark upon that now now, Facebook family, you are about to embark upon that. Amen. He taught him how to believe God for the impossible. It's time, Sister Lottie, for you to believe God for the impossible. Sister Michelle, Sister Karina, daughter, it's time for you to believe God for the impossible. Sister Nicole, it's your time. Amen. Sister Nakia, you better tell that devil, it's my time. I'm in the door. I'm behind that door. An opportunity right here, it presents itself to you this day. Choose ye this day whom thou going to serve. There was a famine in the land. Hallelujah. But Abraham taught his son how to sow into God. He taught his son how to be willing and obedient. I'm teaching this body of Christ how to obey God through the circumstances. Though the storms in life are raging, you've got to know that you're behind the right door. And behind that door is protection. Behind that door is healing. Behind that it's behind the door, y'all. Children, look at here. It's behind that door. There is a place in God that God can give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide in the shadows of the almighty. And that's where we are. We're in the era of just God. That's all we need. You only need God, but you need to be behind the right door. There is always one door that is open, but I need you to choose the door today. Choose that door. Choose that door. Maybe you had a shady past. So what? Maybe you've been married two or three times. So what? Maybe you've had to struggle from the time that you came out of your mother's womb. That's because the door has been closed to you. But guess what? Access has been granted now. You have an opportunity to do it over. You've got an opportunity to get it right this day. Your social calendar is about to increase. You're going to begin to get invites from political figures. You're going to begin to get invites from places that you never, ever thought you're going to have before. You're going to have opportunities, uh, Minister Kelly. That's right. Minister Marquita, you better get ready for that business of yours to flourish because it's your time. We've been through the storms and we've been through the rains, but it's our time now. Can I help somebody on this prophetic prayer line? Can I help somebody on this Facebook Live this morning? It's your time. It's your opportunity. There is always one door open. And guess what? This one door gives you access to your vision. 
Your vision is your purpose. Your vision is that God gave you before you ever came on this earth. I'm getting ready to close out our session for today. I make sure that you give everyone this information that we're here Monday through Friday, Facebook Live, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Lord shared this with me, and I'll leave this with you. He said to tell my people the place was already there for them. The opportunities were there before he even placed you on this earth. Remember when God delivered the children of Israel out of bondage? The promised land was already there. He didn't have to create a promised land. He didn't have to run in front of them and say, oh, I've got to create this land with milk and honey. Oh, I've got to put all of these uh, figs and I've got to put all of these grapes and I've got to put everything in place. It was already there. Opportunity is already there. What the Lord wants for you to do is go to the place where it already exists. And that's called by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care what the devil presents to you from this day forth. Know that you have gone through the correct door. I don't care what he brings in your life. I don't care who leaves your life. Know that God allows everything to do in his own season, in his own time. He has strengthened you. He has made you. He has molded you. He created in you that clean heart. He renewed that right spirit. It's just for you. It's just for you. You've been seasoned. You've been tempered in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You've been tempered in the Holy Ghost. So it's your time now. It's time for you to be successful. It's time for you to live this life. It's time for you to have the better things in life, the finer things in life, more opportunities, but it comes because you're in the right door. Walk in the right door. The favor of the Lord rests upon you. He said, tell my people before I even place you on this earth, opportunity was right there. Your promised land is already there. It already exists and it's already there. Amen. The favor of the Lord, it's already there. And we bless God. We bless God for you this day. Our God, our Father, we thank you for our new family today. We thank you for this new body of Christ, our newfound friends. Lord, I'm stepping out by faith and listening to you, God, to, to teach your people. You said, has a nation changed their God? Has a people gone believing in other gods rather than the God of your salvation? You said, Lord, I need you to change this nation back to me. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. It is in God that we live. It is in God that we move. It is in God that we have our being. And so, Jesus, you were the one. You became the door. You defied gravity. You died in order for us to live. And I thank you, Father, as you embrace this newness, as we embark upon this newness, that you minister to your people. Minister only the way that you can, God, to let them know that the hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, that I have not seen and ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that you have in store for those that love the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount it with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. Wait, I say, on the Lord. There's a door of opportunity that opens itself up to those that avail themselves to hear by the Spirit what the Lord has to say to the church. And we bless them in Jesus' name. We bless you in Jesus' name. Well, Facebook family, we're going to cut off with you this morning. We're going to stay on our prayer line and get our praise reports and testimonies from our prayer line. Don't forget that you can also join us at 712-432-0075. Your access code is 533-510. If you all can post this, we're going worldwide. This thing is going viral. It's going Bible because I know God and I know the timing of God. Tomorrow we're going to believe God to uh, release a prophetic word over the prayer line. We want to prophesy over you. I, I go by names. I see your name and if the Lord gives me something for you, I'm going to begin to speak to your spirit what thus saith the Lord. And I'm believing God. Don't forget about our powerful, powerful ladies retreat. For those of you that uh, tuned in a little later for us, we have a ladies retreat. Uh, Sister Crystal, if you can repost that for us again, daughter. Our ladies retreat is going to be August the 13th uh, through the 17th. We're going to uh, Dominican Republic. That's right. We're going to the Dominican Republic in our ladies retreat, traveling men and women. We travel. They make a mistake sometimes and call our name traveling men and women. And we do travel. Traveling men and women. We have a six days, five nights excursion. That's right. And the Dominican Republic, August the 13th through the 17th. That's in 2018. In 2018, uh, we're going to the Crown Villas. And those villas, they call them their mansions. And we're believing God. I want all, for you, all of you all to come. Let's prepare ourselves to go now. Prepare to go now. Uh, we need to invest in ourselves and we need to make investments within ourselves. And so now God gives us opportunity to live life. Uh, you can call our admin line at 407-545-1133 for further information and to go ahead and start. Uh, we have three different times that you can make your deposits. December the 15th, 
February the 23rd, and then again on April the 27th. And we made it very affordable for everyone. It's only $235 per payment, three deposits of $235. There's no way, no how that you can get any type of a grand vacation as such for that amount. And we're believing God. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to see you tomorrow. Uh, and make sure that you share this with everyone. The devil busting, the demon chasing, the woman, the wisdom, and the word. This is Moses with a skirt on. This is Dr. Loretta V. Harris, and we're changing a nation back to God. Enjoy Jesus. Live fully and live freely. God bless you.